Well, well, well. We've recently seen the recent release of the new Mana Spirals for Water Adventurers, and with it comes some new strategies. Most recently, I've been seeing a 4 Karina strategy bouncing around, and it's been capable of achieving sub 1 minute clears. I'll be covering the strategies and the Karina setup necessary to achieve such a thing. Of course, the first thing you'll want is a Karina with all 70 nodes on the Mana Spiral unlocked. You'll also want either a Gavner and Trenner or a Siren, and the overall team composition in your group, you'll want a rough spread of two Bunnies and two Siren. You can substitute Leviathan for Siren, but it'll be a speed trade-off and you'll notice it go a bit slower. Fewer Bunnies than two will cause the runs to go longer, and at four Sirens you can expect runs to last up to three minutes. In terms of weapons I've seen people use, it goes between either the Maximum Unbound Tier 2 Mercury Axe, or a maximum unbound Agito Axe. In terms of skill share, there's two choices, one of which is mandatory. All Karinas should be using the Patia skill share. With the recent shadow events and the free shadow terms we received before, most of you should have some shadow terms to use on a Patia skill share. Budget Karinas can opt to use the Ranzel skill share as their second one, whereas at least one Karina in the fight should have a Summer Saliera skill share. More Summer Saliera isn't too bad, but the optimal layout is just to have one in the fight, as Ranzel's skill share does more damage. For one print setups, the one I've seen the most is Summer Paladins and Brothers in Arms, but if you don't have those two very, I'd say fairly niche one prints, you can also go with Valiant Crown and his clever brother, or if you have Feline Hospitality, that can also work in place of his clever brother. And then for your backline, most people I've seen have always used a wand, preferably Summer Estelle for her buff time co-ability, and then it's a toss up between Blades, Mega Man, or Daggers for the last two co-abilities. If you're using a dagger in your backline, there's a slight preference for Renee due to her buff time chain co-ability, but otherwise it's not a huge deal. Anyway, onwards to how to actually execute the fight. The first thing you'll want to do is actually roll backwards most of the time, because you want the twins to stack up on each other following their first purple dashes. The following actions will depend on which skill shares you've taken. If you've gone with Patia and Ranzel, you'll want to prioritise using Patia's skill first for the buffs, followed by Black Flag to maintain the defence buff, followed by Raging Tide as your main damage output, and then using Ranzel if you haven't finished the phase yet. If you've got the Summer Saliera skill share instead of Ranzel's, then you'll want to prioritise that first, maintaining Bog on the twins, and then the same priority follows with Patia, and then Black Flag, and then Raging Tide as your main damage skill. If both twins are appropriately stacked on top of each other, and you've mashed all of your skills, if you have enough damage then this should put you straight into Phase 2. At the start of Phase 2, one Gavdru and Trana Karina and both Siren Karina should transform to soak the unavoidable damage. In ideal situations, you should be able to iframe the first red marker with a dragon skill before sacrificing the dragon to the following purple. Every Karina should then unload their skills, prioritising the defence buffs, maintaining Bog, and then the defence buff from Black Flag, before unloading with Raging Tide and then Ranzel for good measure. Ideally, the bunny Karina that didn't transform for the phase change should now transform to maintain the skill charge zone uptime. Again, skill spam, like this is generally how the fight goes, it's not too much thinking involved, and you just follow a standard priority system. If you have enough damage, you should be able to reach the Hana Ichimon Mare phase. Avoid this as normal and prepare for her landing with more Gavner and Trenner zones. If all things go perfectly and you have a bit of luck with crits, you should be able to clear the fight in under a minute. If not, you can still clear a bit slower, but you'll have to deal with more mechanics and the downtime associated with them will elongate the fight. I've not had much trouble finding rooms attempting to execute this strategy. Generally, axe-only rooms with the might gate set at around 10.3k will result in an appropriate Karina room. My main issue with this strategy is that I don't think most people in public rooms are familiar enough with the strategy to consistently execute it perfectly. There's also the issue of coordinating Gavner and Trenner usage to ensure that the buff zones are spread out. Two or more zones at the same time generally leads to wasted charge, again elongating the fight a bit. Your best bet is probably heading to a Discord and coordinating strategies beforehand, but personally I was a bit too lazy to do that. 
The great thing about this strategy is, even if you don't get the sub 1 minute clear, you can still go through the fight as normal, you have some sustain with Karina's innate healing double buff, so you can still go for a 2 or 3 minute clear if you're not slamming things out in under 60 seconds. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, let me know how it goes for you in the comments and if you have any questions, and consider leaving a like and subscribing if you enjoyed the content. In the end, take it easy, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.